Santa. Thank you. It's not raining today, but it looks like it can probably creep up for the rest of the week again. It's gonna be a rainy month so far, huh? It seems like today, from most of the stories I read, the common theme was tech and entertainment with children. Do you encourage them to use items like that as they grow up to get better, or do you discourage them from doing so because for whatever reason you think it's dangerous and so forth? This first one here, it says 12-year-old Milk wins drone racing title again. Wanraya Milk Wanapong continued her mastery in drone racing by retaining the crown in a world competition in China. The 12-year-old won the women's race organized by the World Air Sports Federation on Saturday, beating her older South Korean and American competitors in the competition held outside Ningbo, a city in Zhejiang province about 150 kilometers south of Shanghai. She successfully defended her title to finish ahead of Korean Si Young Park 15 and 10 Ma 34 of the USA. The organizer said on a message posted on his Facebook account on Sunday. So she's continuing her streak I guess because he even says last year's milk stunned the world at age 11 when she won as the youngest drone racer. So basically that's still continuing. This year, South Korean drone racers dominated the event with wins in the overall junior and team categories. Marcus Hangani, the FAI Acting Secretary General, praised them all but has special words for the young girl from Thailand. And according to what the person said, congratulations to all the medalists, particularly the Korean team, on claiming gold medals in a total of three categories. And the impressive young Thai pilot, Wanraya Wanapong, who is now an FAI World Champion for the second time at just 12 years old. And it says the competition drew 112 participants this year. So that's great. Basically it shows you it doesn't matter of age and so forth. It's mostly just about, I guess, practice and commitment. And it makes you think because here anyways, if you flew like an FPV drone with those goggles and it's over 250 grams, technically it's illegal to do that. It's like there too, if you constantly have people just, I guess, arbitrarily judging things based on secondhand information with no practical experience like this, you can imagine how there's going to be no one like with skill sets in whatever field it may be. If they're doing it perfectly safe, I mean, there's nothing wrong with it. Maybe people should get some hands-on experience many times before making like some quick judgment. But with that thought, and still like, I guess around China, I guess you could say in terms of people there, it was interesting reading this one. It says, China bans children playing video games for more than 90 minutes a day or at night. China has announced drastic curfew measures on children in an attempt to curb video game addiction in the country. Gamers under the age of 18 will be banned from playing online games for more than 90 minutes on weekdays and will be forbidden from playing between 10 p.m. and 8 a.m. on weekends and public holidays. They will be allowed to play up to three hours per day. Official government guidelines outlining the new restrictions were issued by China's General Administration of Press and Publications and will be imposed directly through gaming platforms operating in the country. A spokesperson for the administration told state-run Xinhua News agency that the measures were designed to protect the physical and mental health of minors. The rules also include limitations on the amount of money children can spend within games, with gamers under 16 years old allowed to spend up to 200 yuan per month, and those between 16 and 18 able to spend 400 yuan. So that would be kind of interesting if there's going to be like some net nanny type of thing, like in terms of monitoring people. And it says, China is the world's second biggest gaming market behind the US, but authorities in the country have repeatedly criticized the negative impact of video games can have on young people. A study in 2015 found that 500 million Chinese citizens suffered from visual impairment, which researchers blame on the rise of mobile phones and online games. No scientific consensus that myopia can be caused by video games, but East Asian countries have seen a significant rise in the condition in recent years. So like there, would you think it's good to have restrictions like that? Because basically, as they say, it's addictive, it could affect your eyesight and all that. For me, as a person who grew up playing video games, and I still do, just don't have as much time, obviously, to invest in it. I don't know, in terms of things like vision and all that, I actually have one of the best vision amongst my peers, friends, and family. No glasses or anything like that. I can see really far away. And again, I've been playing video games forever. I mean, for a lot of games, like role-playing games, like sessions would normally be like, what? Maybe one, two, three hours, you save it, and then that's it, you go away. But I've been playing it like for so long, it didn't affect me because I would think there's just so many factors nowadays, like here in the study says, you know, it's not conclusive. I would think there's so much more like diet, for example, that would affect it. Where a lot of people who could spend more time, like maybe in China, like before they didn't have as much money, 
now being introduced to like various things they do differently in that way eating i don't know junk food maybe they can afford alcohol and so forth i don't know maybe that affects it but there's so many factors and i know it's still kind of a thing that people think is really weird but things like esports is actually like a legitimate profession that a lot of people do they get paid millions of dollars just like an athlete like say basketball or hockey in the same fashion so it makes you wonder in that sense is it good to kind of restrict people in that way too because nowadays it could be a career for a lot of people if you want to do it that way I actually don't understand too why if that is the concern how come that's not expanded into things to just say like watching a TV show or a movie or something like that as well because it could be the same thing if you think about it I guess too should that be like a parental thing for example like they decide what their child should and can do and all that or should it be the government like in those cases kind of reminds me of the comments that I regularly read even back like when the drone laws and stuff here like came out initially people were saying whoever's coming up with laws regulations trying to guide things like safety rules and all that they should have like x amount of days or whatever of experience with the product or whatever it may be in that style so that they can actually judge if it's like safe or dangerous or not as opposed to going by secondhand information because you never know in those cases it could just be influenced by someone else where it's in their benefit to have it written in that way correct I guess it makes sense at the same time I guess on the other side of perspective would it actually be practical to have the person in charge like always spend all this time learning whatever it is like with actual practical hands-on experience for everything that they have to make laws for as opposed to relying again like oh this is going to be my advisor he's going to tell me everything and I'm just going to trust him. Alright, see you guys later.